Number 10. Lobo's origin has undergone interesting twists and turns, creating a somewhat contradictory narrative. Originally introduced in Omega Min number 3, Lobo was portrayed as the last survivor of the Valorpian race, exterminated by another alien race due to their violent nature. However, in Lobo Volume 2 number 0, his origin took a dramatic turn. It was revealed that he was a Charnian and was responsible for the extinction of his own people. Number 9. Lobo has an unusual fondness for space dolphins and going to great lengths to protect them. These are the only creatures in the universe that he would not be willing to hurt, no matter how much money was offered. He will also hunt down any who capture or attempt to hurt space dolphins, even though he's not being paid to do it. Number 8. Lobo made his first appearance in Omega Men number 3, which was published by DC Comics in June 1983. Created by writer Roger Slifer and artist Keith Jiffin, Lobo started as a villainous character in the pages of the Omega Men before evolving into an anti-hero with a unique sense of humor and a love for extreme violence. Over the years, Lobo has become a fan-favorite character known for his over-the-top personality and unconventional approach to superheroics. Number 7 Lobo is Stan Lee's favorite DC character. In an interview on a Kevin Smith podcast and on a video interview a little while before his passing, Stan Lee was asked in an interview over who his favorite superhero from DC was. His answer was Lobo, and he also said he would have loved to have invented him. Number 6 Lobo once fought Santa Claus in a special one-shot comic titled Lobo Paramilitary Christmas Special, published in 1991. In the story, Lobo is hired by the Easter Bunny to assassinate Santa Claus. The comic is known for its dark humor and over-the-top violence, typical of the character Lobo. Keep in mind that this particular storyline is intended for mature audiences due to its graphic content. Number 5 In the 2008 miniseries Rain in Hell, it was revealed that Lobo's soul had been trapped in hell since the events of the 1996 miniseries Underworld Unleashed where he made a deal with the demon Naren. Lobo's soul was held in Hell's prison, the labyrinth, and served as a power source for Naren's castle. Lobo's eventual freedom from Hell led to his revenge against Naren, and it provided an interesting storyline that tied back to his previous dealings in the DC Comics universe. Number 4 During the events of the 52 series in 2006 and 2007, Lobo, in a surprising turn of events, declared himself the Archbishop of the First Celestial Church of the Triple Fish God. This new spiritual chapter in Lobo's life involved preaching pacifism and worshipping a fish god. However, it was later revealed that Lobo had been coerced into a vow of nonviolence by the fish god. As soon as he had the means to break free from this oath, Lobo swiftly disposed of the fish god, returning to his more violent and chaotic ways. I hope you're enjoying this video. Before we get to the top 3, please could you take a moment to like and subscribe to my channel as it would be a great help. Number 3 Lobo's unconventional journey took another unexpected turn when he joined the Justice League of America. His stint with the superhero team was initiated through an intricate series of events involving the Suicide Squad and a conflict between Superman's team and Amanda Waller's original Suicide Squad. In Justice League vs. Suicide Squad, a new team was formed, including Lobo, Dr. Polaris, and Rustam, under the leadership of Maxwell Lord. However, Maxwell Lord had control over Lobo through brainwashing. Batman, always resourceful, exploited Lobo's unique regenerative abilities to break the control. In gratitude for freeing him from Maxwell Lord's influence, Lobo accepted Batman's invitation to join the Justice League of America. During his time with the Justice League, Lobo served alongside heroes like Adam, Killer Frost, and Black Canary. Despite the unlikely alliance, Lobo's chaotic nature ultimately led him to consider his debt paid after serving a term, prompting his return to the life of a space-traveling bounty hunter. Number 2 Amalgam Comics was a two-year collection of books that blended Marvel and DC, crossbreeding their most popular characters into all-new heroes such as Iron Lantern and Doctor Strange Fate. Again, not to miss a golden opportunity, the comical Lobo was melded with one of Marvel's more offbeat characters, Howard the Duck. Lobo the Duck was a one-shot title that was released in the second series of Amalgam Comics. 
The series follows the titular character and his shape-shifting pet Impossible Dog, a blend of Impossible Man and Dog, as they investigate the murders of other amalgam characters. Along the way, the main duck comes into conflict with a range of wacky villains, including Gold Kidney Lady and Dr. Botface. Unfortunately, the book ends on a cliffhanger that was left unfulfilled. Number 1. Lobo's Powers His overpowered nature makes him a formidable opponent, often matching or even surpassing the strength, speed, and durability of DC's greatest heroes, including Superman. The extent of his abilities may vary in different appearances, but Lobo's reputation as an almost indestructible force in the DC universe is a defining characteristic. This makes encounters with the main man unpredictable. As the last of his kind, an indestructible lone wolf with his own space-traveling motorbike, he follows a unique and often perverse code of ethics. Despite his selfish and arrogant nature, Lobo maintains a reputation for being a man of his word, especially when it comes to bounty hunting contracts. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from the video and we'll see you on the next one.